Okay, so what we know here on this one, we're trying to find the all the possible rational roots first, and then we'll reduce that down to the actual rational roots second. The f uh, first possible rational roots are the factors of the front uh, leading coefficient, which are plus or minus 1, and the factors of the constant term, which are plus or minus 6, plus or minus 3, plus or minus 2, plus or minus 1. And the actual possible answers here are all combinations of the constants factors on top of the lead coefficients factors. So 6 on top of 1 would be plus or minus 6. Uh, 3 on top of 1 would be plus or minus 3. 2 on top of 1 would be plus or minus 2. 1 on top of 1 would be plus or minus 1. So of all the possible numbers out there, we know that the rational roots of this particular problem have to be either plus or minus 6, plus or minus 3, plus or minus 2, or plus or minus 1. Okay? So now we'll take the next step to reduce that down to the actual roots, zeros, x-intercepts of this graph. Next. Okay, so next we'll do synthetic division, and we'll figure out uh, that synthetic division is when you take one of your zeros... Um, I'm going to take, for example, uh, 3 and test that out and write the problem with all these coefficients down uh, just as the numbers 1, negative 3, negative 3, 11, and negative 6. Draw a little line here a little ways down, leaving some room so you can put some numbers in the, above the line. And you begin synthetic division by bringing the 1 down, multiplying with the 3, uh, 3 times 1 is 3, writing it here. Adding down, 0. 3 times 0 is 0, writing it here. Negative 3 added to 0 is negative 3. 3 times negative 3 is negative 9. That's 2. That's 6. That's 0. So what we learn from this is that 3 is one of the zeros. And we aren't quite far enough down to have it into a quadratic equation. So what we need to do now is keep going with, excuse me, with what our remainder was here now that we found one of our zeros. So 1, 0, negative 3, and 2. And now we're going to go back up and get another one of our uh, zeros, potential zeros which was actually, I say, I'm going to say negative 2, okay? And we'll continue this. So uh, dividing again, 1, negative 2, negative 2 added to 0 is negative 2, then 4, then uh, uh, adding that together you get 1, and then negative 2 times 1 is negative 2, and adding that together I get 0. So another zero is negative two. If you had found this not to be a zero in this spot, you just cross it off the list of options and try again. Okay. Um, we then have left over the leading coefficients of a quadratic equation. x squared, 1x squared, minus 2x plus 1 equaling zero and then we can factor that to find the last zero or two. So we have x, x, factors of one are one and one, factors of one that make negative two would be negative one and negative one, and so my last zero is actually the number one. So my zeros are one, negative two, and three. Now you can confirm that by graphing and looking at the zeros and seeing if they are indeed 1, negative 2, and 3. Okay, there's a really super easy way to find the zeros using a thing called the table of your calculator. We have never done this before, so uh, we'll show you how to set that up. The uh, first thing you notice I did is I typed in the equation into y equals, okay, and then I went to second table set, which is second window. And what I want to do here is I want to have this independent variable set to ask, not auto. 
So if yours is set to auto, make sure you push enter on ask, and then go to second graph, which will actually take us to table. This table area allows you to put in all of the possible uh, zeros that we had come up with. So uh, let me look at that list here. That list of potential zeros was positive and negative one, positive and negative two, positive and negative three, and positive and negative six. So let's just go down that list. Uh, six, negative six, uh, I believe three, negative three, uh, was it two? Yep, two and one. Two, negative two, one. Okay, and I don't have room to do negative one while this is still on the screen. But what you see by doing that is you see that uh, it's telling me the zeros as I plug in those values. So it's calculating the y based on the x going into that equation which is pretty cool. So three is a zero, negative two is a zero, one is a zero. And then if I have more to check, which I had more to check, that negative one, I would say delete, 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 and say, well, is negative one a zero as well? And no, it is not. So that's a pretty easy, quick way to get the zeros figured out once you have the list of possible rational zeros. Okay, so the rational roots theorem says that if we look at the uh, coefficient of the front and consider all possible factors of it. So possible factors of 6 are plus or minus 6, plus or minus 3, plus or minus 2, plus or minus 1. And we look at the factors of 8, plus or minus 8, plus or minus 4, plus or minus 2, plus or minus 1, and put those all together. Uh, in a way that puts the uh, that puts the factors of the constant on top of the factors of the leading coefficient that we have a potential set of zeros for this polynomial. Now this is going to have a bunch, so we'll just list them over here. It would be plus or minus 8 sixths. 8 sixths would be uh, reduced to 4 thirds. We'd have plus or minus 8 thirds. We'd have plus or minus 8 halves, which is 4. We'd have plus or minus 8 over 1, which would be 8. Then we would have plus or minus 4 sixths, which is 2 thirds. We'd have plus or minus 4 thirds, which I already have. We'd have plus or minus 4 halves, which is 2. And we'd have plus or minus 4 over 1, which is 4, and I already have that in my list. And then we'd have plus or minus 2 sixths, which is 1 third. And we'd have plus or minus 2 thirds, which I already have. We'd have plus or minus 2 over 2, which would be plus or minus 1. And we'd have plus or minus 2 over 1, which is 2, and I already have that. Finally, we'd have plus or minus 1 sixth, plus or minus 1 third, which I already have, plus or minus 1 half. and plus or minus 1 over 1, which I already have, 1. So these are all of the possible solutions, uh, zeros, if you will, of the graph. We'll narrow it down further here in a second. Okay, so this is quite a lengthy list of uh, options over here. Uh, so I'm just going to narrow it down by graphing it and then seeing if I see one that's obvious and then that'll get me started on my synthetic division. So if I go type this in and hit graph, now I had to do some window adjusting because clearly this window was not my default window. 
I think I had to set the window down all the way to negative uh, 50, I believe, for a Y min to see this, okay? And I can actually just real quick visually say, hey, you know what? I think one of those zeros actually looks like it is four. And so what I see over here is one of our options was positive four. That's the one I'm gonna start with. So now to set this up for synthetic division, using uh, the number four, we would say four is the zero we're checking, six, negative 23, negative six and eight is my equation in, in the synthetic division form. Bring the six down, multiply with four, get 24, write it underneath, add those together, get one, multiply with four, get four, add down, get negative two, multiply with four, get negative eight, and indeed, we confirm that a zero was actually at four. So one of our rational zeros is four. And what I know at this point then is this remaining, this remaining trinomial right here is a, a six X squared, one less power than I started with, minus a one X minus a two. And what we're going to do is we're going to attempt to factor. 6x could be 3x and 2x to make 6x squared. 2's factors are 2 and 1. And if I'm careful about how I get these in here, 2 and 1, the outsides and the insides would make 3x and 4x. And 3x and 4x would make negative 1x here in the middle if the 4 was negative. So we'll make that a negative 2 and this a positive 1. And now I can kind of see that my zeros are now whatever makes 3x minus 2 equal 0, whatever makes 3x equal 2, and that would be 2 thirds. And whatever makes 2x plus 1 equal 0, whatever makes 2x equal negative 1, which is negative 1 half. So my zeros are 4, 2 thirds, and negative one half. That could be confirmed on the calculator and finding the zeros that way as well. Okay, so again, checking this one as well. I just entered the equation, the function in my calculator, and then I'm gonna go to second graph, which is table. And I can do 4 divided by 3 to do 4 thirds and realize that that is not a 0. Uh, negative 4 divided by 3, not a 0. 8 divided by 3, not a 0. Negative 8 divided by 3, not a 0. 4, a 0. So 4 is a 0. Negative 4, not a 0. And uh, 8, not a 0. When you run out of room, it looks like you're going to have to clear out that list and then continue. Negative 8, not a 0. 2 thirds, not a 0. Negative 2 thirds is a 0. Okay, and so on and so forth until you exhaust all those possibilities to know which ones are the zeros and which ones are not.